Hi, my name is Derek and you're watching the dev vlogs for Bayside Games. We're making a game called Robots Can't Jump. In this series of dev vlogs, we are creating a particle manager system and we've already gotten quite far. Um, we've got um, some real cool stuff happening. Um, now I want to talk a little bit about how we organize our uh, different types of particle effects and things like that. Um, organization is really, really key, especially if you've got multiple people working on a project. Uh, what I want to do is I want to actually have just one file that contains a whole bunch of different particle effects, like a palette that we can choose from uh, to create, uh, you know, to attach new effects to things. And that uh, designer could theoretically um, alter independently of me and he could check that in and dry it out. Um, so that's obviously very simple to do. Um, we're just going to close Visual Studio for a moment and then we're going to open up Notepad, which for some reason gets an error every single time I open it, which is incredibly annoying. Um, in our MKB file over here, we're going to add a new C, a new C source file. So we'll just do that quickly. We'll just, we'll just open that up. Okay, great. So we're just going to close Visual Studio, and then we're going to add in the new file first, so we have something to add. And in the FX, the uh, particles, it's going to create a new file in here. We're going to call this particle templates, particle types, .cpp. And we're also going to need a header file for that too, because we're going to sort of declare things in the header. Okay, I'm just going to add these to my source control database. And last but not least, I'm going to add them to the NKB. Remember the particle types, that's right. Couldn't remember exactly what I called them. When you're working this fast, you don't always see, can be a little bit absent minded, it's okay. Okay, great. So let's get that NKB going on by just opening it in Visual Studio. Okay, we're ready to roll. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is push this whole um, test particle system into that CPP file. Uh, we've got a whole lot of stuff in here now, but I just want the particle effect stuff. Okay. Alright, there's some work that we need to do first. Um, the namespace obviously is quite important. Um, everything in the Robots Can't Jump project goes into a namespace called ICJ. That's just so we can compartmentalize our stuff. And we want to include the uh, header too, very important. Uh, particle types that I should say. And what we also need to do is um, the header file. So. types is this one okay we'll define that just a basic very basic header file and we're actually just going to copy this stuff it's not going to be const anymore in fact um, yeah we do want it to be in there but that's fine okay and we're going to rename this um, to be a, give it a more descriptive name because this is now a separate particle effect. We're going to call this one Rocket Particle. Rocket, uh, Rocket Exhaust would be a good name for it. And you can see we've got a whole bunch of red lines here. That's because we haven't included all the relevant header files for um, Airplay, I mean Marmalade and all that stuff. You can do that just by including my root header file, which is RCJ. It automatically includes all that stuff for me. In addition, we're also going to need the particle manager to be included here so that we can get the particle container data indirectly included for us. And we are going to grab this. Okay, um, what we actually need to do here, um, because of the way C++ declares data across modules, which means CPP files, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to make a little function called get rocket exhaust, just a little accessor. And it's just going to sit at the bottom of this, at the top of this file. Actually, I'm going to push it down to the bottom here. There we go, that should do the trick. And it's still a little bit worried. Uh, we've still got some red here. I'm not really sure why. Yeah, it should be okay now though. So I'm not really sure why it's moaning about that stuff. We've added the file. And now we can go back to RCJ, include that. This is going to be a very common pattern. If wherever we use particle effects, we'll first declare one in the um, the types file, and then where we actually use it, I think I went past it. Now we can just use um, RCJ 
and we can use uh, oh, when I look at this um, it's just sort of stuck in the namespace there and that's not a very good name so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to stick these things into a little struct <clears throat> I'm going to call it particles I'm going to simulate make this a static so you'll see momentarily why that works and I'll show you in RCJ we're now going to do particles so we don't actually need to put this here and if you look at that now that's actually a member of this little struct it's just a little static struct it doesn't do anything more than wrap a bunch of functions so later on uh, when we want we could have heaps more particles in here you know like we could have one like um, explosion or we could have one like um, you know birds like birds are a common way of sh doing particles you know if you want to have little birds flying around your scene they make great particles if there's so many things you can do and we want to have just one little place where the artists can come in and just add and remove stuff they can literally just copy this piece of the piece of code and make a new little accessor and that's all they got to do and then they can hand that off to a programmer and the programmer can hook it up for them to the right bone or whatever so let's try that out Yep, that's looking fine. So we've just moved the data around. We haven't actually changed it. So that's pretty much what I was expecting to see. So when I look at this thing, Rocket Exhaust, it looks like a great particle effect. It's generating some pretty awesome particles. Uh, the one thing that I would like to change is, first of all, the size of these particles. I would like to make them just a little bit smaller. Um, let's just go and check how that is done. So this is the size of the particles we're talking about here. And that's just currently a fixed value. So first of all, we've got to move that and the lifetime to um, this. These should both be initialized from our data. So we're going to actually add those to our data. So the initial lifetime is already there. What we want is a size. So we're going to make that. Yeah, we'll just make that a float. Actually, we should make that an IW fixed along with the lifetime. These are very performance sensitive things um, because we're going to be assigning them to every single particle we create. So we don't want to do too many conversions for that if we can help it um, for the obvious reason that it's going to happen so often. So we're going to have to make a couple of changes to make that fly too. But it shouldn't be too difficult. We'll just do a search replace and size. So this we call this initial size because it can change over time. Initial scale of this particle default should just be one we we'll try and put a sort of a default in here to help people um, and give little comments like must be more than zero because if you have zero particles it's not going to work so it must also be greater than zero for the spawn radius and we'll, we'll get back to that one okay so we'll start enforcing this later on so what we're just going to do is just do a quick search for initial lifetime because we change this type. So it's very important we review every use of it just to make sure. Um, okay, it's not, it's not used, uh, which is the easiest case for converting. What we're going to do is just look at um, add particle. Oh, we're in the wrong file here. Oh, yeah, we're already there. Okay, so the lifetime should be our data, initial lifetime. And if we go and look, we had half a second there in our particle types. The lifetime is 0 0.1. So let's change that to look more, more like what we had. Okay, great. And now, oh, we've actually gone and, oh, no, that's right. And then we just did the same thing for the uh, size. Great. Okay, so that'll work fine. We'll just give that a quick test run and make sure it works. Okay, that didn't work so well. Uh, we'll just do a quick thing. Now, I'm mean, really interested, oh, okay, the maximum radius and things. We got a bit of a problem here, and this is sort of just really a flaw of the language. Um, it's kind of hard to see what order these things are being declared in. So we've added it at an initial size, but we haven't actually changed that one. So it comes just before the modes, and that will be, this initial size can be, uh, we'll start off with uh, 0 0.05. And the other one that's now become an item fix is initial lifetime. And we need to move it. 
So hopefully once this sort of stabilizes a little bit, this type of thing won't be too important. We'll just be able to cut and paste it and it's not going to change much and we'll add things to the bottom of it next time. But you know, we're still dealing with it, we're still developing it, so that's okay. Check that it still works as designed. Yep, okay, so that's actually good because I wanted the particles to be just slightly smaller. So that looks really cool. Um, now, the next thing I want to do is I want to make the rocket exhaust only come out of the bottom of the character, but not the center of the character, as you see it happening just before. So if you look at a character in Max, he has some bones. Um, so I'm just going to put him into, uh, if I can remember how, I believe it's Alt-X. Oh, there we go. I'm just going to go into invisible mode and just zoom in a little bit to show you this central thing that I want to look at. So if you look closely here at the bottom of the character, there is a bone. It's kind of hard to see over here, but there it is. See, right over there, that is the central bone, which is sort of the base of the character. And if we go and look at the um, the skin, uh, if we actually look at the bone, if I can remember, if I can remember how, how to get there. Um, it's not that one. Um, I'm just trying to remember how, to, how I look at the skeleton. Oh, there we go. So... The root bone, the neck bone, these are all good. Um, what I want to do is just quickly go and have a look at the bones themselves. Now I'm just trying to remember how that how that works. The envelope. I believe there's actually a bone tool here. Here we go. Okay, that's the one I want. So I want to look at the hierarchy of bones. And that is in schematic view. I'm just going to bring that up. And the one I want is the root bone. So you see I've selected it. So there's different bones. There's a rear axle, right axle. The one I'm interested in is the root bone because that's sort of like where I think the jet will be. So if I move this up slightly, that's the bottom, this bottom center of the character. That's where I want the particles to come from. And I can actually access that through the Marmalade API. Um, so I'll show you how we do that. This is uh, relating to the position that we attach to the whole particle system. So what we need to do is to actually ask Marmalade where that particular bone is located. Okay, so what we want to do is instead of using the rigid body's position, we want to actually obtain the position of that bone while it's being animated. Um, that's an important distinction to make. So if we look at the player, he's an actor. And actors have this little uh, class member variable called animascale, which is an animated skeleton. Now, if we look at this animated skeleton, you can actually obtain a particular bone. And if you recall correctly, the bone is called, um, let me just bring it back up again. It's called root bone with a capital R. So all we need to do is go back in here. Get, get, uh, okay, we don't actually have a get animascale yet, but we'll give them one. Okay, and the skeleton. I just want to check if that is a return anywhere else. Okay, we don't have an accessible that. That's fine. We will just fetch that in here. We may not have, we may not have this animated skeleton if this actor doesn't have animations. So we're going to return a pointer. And we can make it const. Uh, yeah, we're returning a const pointer, so that's fine. Actually, we won't make this const just for this stage. Is that it? No. What do we call a skeleton? Okay, oh, I'm not doing very well. Okay, there we go. 